Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a simple notepad app in Unity and welcome to episode 6. This tutorial we're going to take a look at creating a little bit of extra to this app with some animation and a little bit of fading with that animation. Basically to say we have saved our game and we'll see what else we can do in the time limit that we have in this tutorial. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial in this series and everything else on my channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So, animation, how can we use it exactly? Well, animation is something that is very common in pretty much everything we use these days. Although it may not seem like animation sometimes, it probably is within your app. So, what we need to do really is get the animation tab available to us. Now I normally have it down here at the bottom, but you can literally have it anywhere in your engine. You can have it here, 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 anywhere. But I'm going to click this little icon here, click on add tab and click on animation. And there we are. This is what the animation tab looks like. And again, you can have it anywhere. So you could click here and have it here. Or you could click here and there, anywhere. It's entirely up to you. Customization. Anyway, to, go, uh, to do this right, what we need to do is initially have somewhere on our app that we want animated. So what we're going to do is have a little note here that says um, text saved or something like that. And it'll animate downwards and fade away after we have saved our note. So to do so, I'm actually going to initially change the size of this text. So I'm going to have it smaller. Let's have it 20 maybe. And just for convenience, have it italic as well. And I'm going to have it right at the very top of the notepad. So our saved is going to appear just here. So let's put that in place. We can actually use a great little thing called duplicate, and we've done it before. So let's take this text element right here, note title, hold control, press D. It'll duplicate, and let's move it into position somewhere probably here. And let's uh, rename the text to say text saved and I'm going to have it bold and probably have it a little bit smaller than what it is so maybe 14 that's that looks a little bit too small 16 maybe not bold but I guess it's entirely up to you how you want to do this because it's your app at the end of the day not mine so we're going to have it start somewhere here so you can see text saved and what we really need to do here is actually set the animation first off with our color. So we need to set this color as alpha zero. So change this number here where it says A to zero. And what that will do is although it's disappeared from our app, it's actually still there. It just means that the transparency is zero. So it's completely transparent. We cannot see it at all, but it does still exist there. And what we're gonna do is animate it so as it comes down and basically fades away. So how do we do this? Well, because we have the animation tab open right here, we need to make sure that this little object here is named correctly. So we just need to uh, rename right there and call it saved text. Now, I like to kind of keep things as neat and tidy as possible, but considering there's not gonna be very many assets in this, you could probably save this animation anywhere. We just have to remember that whatever folder you're in here, is where the animation will saved by default. Obviously you can change it when we do create the animation, but it's probably easier to create a new folder now and just have it as animation. So let's go into this animation folder, head to our animation tab, make sure we're on save text and then click on create. And let's save this animation as saved anim. And now we will be presented with this. Looks like a bit of a graph. First thing we need to do is click on the record button. If you're using a really old version of Unity, probably before Unity 5.5, this button will automatically have been pressed. If you're using a modern version, i.e. 2017, 2018, 2019, then you would just need to press this record button. So we're in 60 frames a second, and we can see that, the fact that it says 60 here in samples, and we're currently on frame zero. Frame zero is the first keyframe. What that means is that we need to set the state it should be in as soon as the animation starts. And remember, I said we have this as zero. So what we need to do is type one in here and then type zero again. And what this will do is it will set a keyframe right here with the alpha as zero. And you can see these two little dots here. 
That's what that basically means. Now, because we're also going to be dealing with its axis on the Y, we also need to state right here, the keyframe, the position Y. So whatever you have as your position right here, you need to set that as your keyframe as well. So in Y, retype whatever it has right there. So 290.14, that's for me. So that's been set now. So its initial starting point is there and its initial color is what we have right there. So I want this to kind of fade quickly on the screen so we can see what's happening. So it says saved. So I'm gonna to go to frame number five right there and hit return. And it'll take me to frame five in the animation. So at frame five, I want us to be able to completely see what the text says. So I've typed 255. I also want the position to be exactly the same right here. So I retype 290.14. But you'll notice we now have three, just like we did on the first keyframe right there. If we hadn't have changed this Y, this one would have been blank. So make sure we have three there. So I want this animation to do it over the course of probably one whole second. And I want it to fade as it's scrolling down. So one whole second, would be 60 frames. So let's have this whole animation played within a second. So we need to go to frame 60, which is one second. And I'm going to change this position now, but I'm gonna use the move tool right here and move it down to about there. I'm also going to change the alpha right here back to zero. And what that will do is it will play the animation from here, scrolling down and fading out at the same time. So once we've done that, we have all our keyframes set, we just press the record button, head back into the project window, click on saved anim right there, and then click loop time, untick, because we don't want it to play over and over and over. Now, if we press play now, we should see this actually happen. We should see the save. There we are. So it says text saved and fades away. We only want this to happen when we press the save button. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can have this occur. We can set new animation states, we can set different animation states and all kinds of things. But the easiest and simplest way to do this is just turn on the actual component itself. So if we uh, untick animator right here, we could do it that way. And I guess it's up to you which one you want to do. Um, I, I don't think there's any real set way, but we'll do this. I'll tell you what, we'll do it the proper way, but I'll explain the easier way as we go through. So if we go back to our animation and double click on our saved text controller, which is this one right here, you can see it's called save text dot controller, double click, and you'll be presented with the animator in whichever window you have it. And all we need to do, I've just zoomed out a little, is set a new state. So right click here, create state, empty. Now on this new state, right click, and then set as default state. What this means is that this animation will play this animation by default. It will always play new state. Since there is no animation attached to new state, no animation will occur. So if we head back to our scene view and click on save text, and everything is in place now for us to modify our script. So let's go to our scripts folder and click on I think it's button controls we've got it in, isn't it? Um, save load, access, save load, that's the one. So if we open up save load in Visual Studio, and all we'll need to do is declare the uh, variable, which is that save text, play the animation when we save it, and when we're complete, revert it back to the new state. So whenever the animation isn't playing, it has to be that new state animation, just so as we can reset the animation as many times as we like. So once this is loaded, there we go. Let's add in a new variable. So public game object, and we'll call it save anim semicolon. And when we save the note, what we need to do is we actually need to use a coroutine. Now a coroutine is a way of controlling things via time. So what we'll initially do here is we'll write this coroutine and we need to go I enumerator and we can call this anything we want. So let's call it something relative to what we're doing. Save T 
text roll, something like that. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. And within here, we need to have save anim.get component. So we're going to get that animator component. So animator open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes the name of that animation that we have just created right there in that animation we need to make sure it is that one and we had it as saved anim so what i like to do is i go to the animation itself right here with the little play button f2 copy that name and then paste it between those quotes just so as we get it perfectly right we don't want it to be a case of we misspelt something so it doesn't work so quote close bracket semicolon and after a uh, course of a second we can then play the new state so we revert it back to that new state so yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets one semicolon now the idea of what this line does is it prevents the next line of code from executing until one second has passed after one second has passed we can then copy that save anim got get component line and change the animation name to new state and remember if we go back into unity back into animator that is the name of that new state animation new space state let's click back on scene view and then back into Visual Studio. And next thing we need to do is after we have saved, we go here and then we need to start that coroutine. And we can literally type start coroutine and in brackets, the name of that coroutine. So save text roll, open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon and save the script. So what's happening here is after we have saved, we are starting the animation within the coroutine. And the reason we have to use a coroutine is because we're controlling time with this line right here. We can't actually do that with inside a normal method such as void save notes. We can't use that line. It just doesn't work. So we need to use the coroutine. So now we have the coroutine set. We can go back into Unity. And remember, it's this save button. So if we go to it, it's on app controls. And now we have to have that game object right there. And that's save text. So we put that there and I'm going to save my scene. And now I'm going to press play. And we can see no animation will play. Nothing will occur, but we can press what we want and then press on save. Text saved. Perfect. And if we press it again, we get the same thing. So let's delete all our text, save again. And there's our animation. It's just a nice little feature to have to say it's been saved. So next tutorial, what we're going to deal with is we'll deal with this close button, I think, next time. So I'd like to have a close button that basically says, do you want to save? Do you want to close? Or do you want to cancel this window and go back to your notepad? So we're going to focus solely on that next tutorial. And maybe if we have time, we'll start looking at things like a little startup splash screen that you see on apps, a bit more button functionality, and then we'll move on to, well, the final stage of this app. So guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.